Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's Friday. Um, and I'm taking the chance to do Faith Wrestle Friday live again. Even though my nose cried live last Friday. Like my nose literally cried. Um, and, but I was not going to do a Faith Wrestle Friday because I needed that permission. And then... When you ask God, I don't feel like this is coming through very clear on my public page. Let me know. I, it seems like it's coming good on my personal page. So hi, everybody. Hi, Annie and Jamie and Cindy and Heather and Michelle. Hi, hi, hi. Um, Sarita, thank you for being here. Um, and plus, my big barking dog, Gertie, Chad just took her to the vet really fast because she needs to get her nails trimmed. And she requires a Hannibal Lecter, like... Um, leather muzzle <laughs> to get her nails trimmed. So I was like, perfect. I can do therapy or I can do Faith Wrestle Friday. I hadn't planned to do it. I needed to do it live. But then during my morning prayer time, lately I have been really, um, my prayer has literally been, use me. What do you want me to see? Please show me in a way I can understand. Use my mouth and my words and my actions to reach somebody. Like I'm not really asking for much right now. Um, because it was so tied to my ego before. And so I just, I am hands down, palms up, like just use me. And so when I did that this morning, I did not expect to hear him. And he was like, and I was like, he goes, well, you need to do a faith wrestle Friday. It's like, no, I don't. I, and um, he reminded me of my butterflies. So for those of you who are on my personal page, you know that I raise monarch butterflies and swallowtails and um, season has begun because I have now 44 eggs um, just in time for Mother's Day, which um, Mother's Day is not an awesome day um, for those of us who uh, have struggled with infertility and loss and um, especially for those of us who uh, don't have children here on this earth. So not my favorite day. I've reclaimed it in many ways throughout the years and um, on Sunday I'm going to do stuff that I love. Because I mother a lot. And, yep, just going to say, I mother better than a lot of mothers sometimes. A lot of people that I judge as not worthy of being a mother. But again, that's above my pay grade, right? See, trauma's still there. Just lives there, right? But so anyways, I have 44 monarch babies. Which means in a month's time, we will have God willing, 44 monarch butterflies. And I will share the whole journey on Facebook because I always do. But so God was like, you have my monarchs. And for those of you who do follow my work, you know um, you know the backstory of why the monarchs are so important to me. I think God literally made them to remind us that we can um, do this journey here on earth and every part of their life cycle has something to do with doing this work that I'm always asking you to do. It's crazy. But anyway, so then when God was like, you got my butterfly or you got my butterflies, you do have a faith wrestle Friday in you. And I was like, I did say this. I said, son of a bitch. I was going to take this afternoon off. But so I Googled metamorphosis Bible verse and I knew that was going to cut out. I don't know why this one phone is not doing well. We'll see what it does. Okay. And did you know that there is a Bible verse with the word metamorphosis? Actually, not quite. But again, I am in the voice. And I'm in 2 Corinthians um, 3.18. And I, as usual, did not look this up for context or anything like that because I just, I asked God to use me and speak through me. So 2 Corinthians 3.18 in the voice. Now all of us with our faces unveiled. Reflect the glory of the Lord as if we are mirrors. And so we are being transformed, metamorphosed, into his same image from one radiance of glory to another, just as the Spirit of the Lord accomplishes it. I mean, the first word was just like unveiled. With our faces unveiled. Like, when you realize the power of what God did when he entered the story. And when you, as we say in Kids Crossing, except Jesus says you're forever, friend, the veil is lifted. Like, the world looks different. Your story looks different. 
it takes work for sure. Like it's, it doesn't mean that it's easy to look back on your traumas, losses and, and tragedies and realize that God is there. And yet like when you're, when that veil is lifted, like you see God was there. And this whole week for me has been like these tiny little glimpses of like some, like of the pieces falling together. And I'll often say to Michelle, like, it is such a gift when he, when he allows us to see the pieces fit together. And when we drop some of our humanness, because even though like, and now all of us with our faces unveiled reflect the glory of God. Like, we still put the veil back on. Like, the world that we live in that tells us that we're never enough. The to-do list that is never done. The old messages of our traumas, losses, and tragedies puts the veil back on. Sometimes we even willingly put the veil back on because that's how uncomfortable the life of faith is. And when we start to realize that part. So I just like that first word of unveiled was just like when I choose to lift that veil and to reflect who Christ is into this world and most importantly what he has done in my life that is we are his mirrors as it says and so we are being transformed metamorphosed into his same image from one radiance of glory to another just as the spirit of the Lord accomplishes it I like metamorphosed, like the reason I, and you'll see this as I share the monarch journey, but like the big parts of the monarch journey for me is like, literally they are microscopic eggs right now. Even if I pulled one out, you wouldn't be able to see it. Like it's, the, it's the tip of a, t a pin and they have everything that they need in that tiny egg to be the beautiful orange butterfly that they are going to be in four weeks. However, it's going to be really painful. And as I say in my TED talk, they're going to have to surrender to the process and they're going to have to do the work because once that cat larva comes out of that egg for the next two weeks, they have to literally grow out of their own skin and then they turn back around and eat it because you can never ever get rid of your traumas, losses, and tragedies. And if you are still trying to run from them, you don't know the unveiled life through Christ because he's using those. That's how he got me to him. Like I have to turn around and eat my past. Like it becomes part of who I am and I must do the work to have it work for me and not against me so that I can grow into that next stage, just like the caterpillar. And then once she grows, she eats a ton of freaking milkweed and she poops a lot because there's a lot of caterpillar poop. In two weeks after eating tons of milkweed, they will go up into the chrysalis, which literally means they liquefy, they become butterfly soup. They have to surrender to the process. They have to lay it all down at his feet to become the glory of what they're meant to be. And they still have to do the work because two weeks after that, they emerge as a butterfly and they still have to pump up their wings. They have to be patient and allow them to dry. They have to knit together their proboscis and then they fly off to really literally only live a couple weeks. Like we have to surrender to the process and still choose to do the work. I have to live this unveiled life. I'm that's We just went down on the public page. I'm going to have to repost it. I'll repost it, guys. Anyways, like... I have to live unveiled and I have to do the work to stop picking up the damn veil and like living the lies of this world, buying into the bullshit of that I'm not enough because I am, because I reflect the glory of God as a mirror, because I choose to live an unveiled life, because I surrender and do the work to be transformed and metamorphosed because Christ is in me and I am in him. The crazy part, there's my butterfly lesson for you. <laughs> Pictures and videos to come. And the voice, there's a teach. See that there's a teach. And it says, drawing from Exodus 32 to 34, Paul uses Moses as a model of one who has been transformed by God's glory. But in a limited way, Moses encountered God through the spirit on that mountain. But the spirit now, as a fulfillment of the new covenant, dwells in the hearts of believers and continually transforms them. 
Once again, I'm being stalked by Exodus and Moses. And I'm reminded of Faith Wrestle Friday a few weeks ago when I just, when I was begging God for a burning bush, when in some ways that's a test and I don't, um, that's not how he works. Rather, I need to say, here I am. Use me. Like I did this morning. Use me. Give me something. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to serve? How do you want me to show up? Um, I didn't want to do this, and I have no idea if that was even helpful. But 2 Corinthians 3.18 has something for you today. Now all of us, with our faces unveiled, reflect the glory of the Lord as if we are mirrors. And so we are being transformed and metamorphosed into his same image from one radiance of glory to another, just as the Spirit of the Lord accomplishes it. It's his works through us. We must surrender to it and choose to do the work. Happy Friday. I'm going to go check for more monarch eggs. And perhaps I'll see you on Tuesday for Take Care Tuesday or Thursday for Therapy Thursday or next Friday for Faith Wrestle Friday. Or perhaps I'll see you on Monday because you have joined my seven day challenge. Seven minutes, seven days, seven dollars. We start on Monday. And if you join me for this round of it, You'll get five rounds of it over the summer because I know summer is tough and crazy and busy for a lot of people. <sighs> what if today you hit your knees and you asked him to use you and you were obedient? Here we go. Perfect timing. Make it a great day and thank you for being here.